Chapter 15. Faith from Destiny. Holding Allie by the wrist, Alexander pulled her through the palace as she dripped across the floor, with all eyes from his guests now watching the two of them. The whispers and gossip had already begun to spread, but Alexander maintained a firm face and a strong grip on Allie's arm. As they approached Alexander's suite, two soldiers stood idly talking to one another out front. Allie chose not to struggle. Sensing Alexander meant no harm to her. The two soldiers snapped back to attention on either side of the curtain as they saw Alexander. Forcefully, Alexander pushed Allie through the curtain doorway before turning back to speak to the guards. Do not allow anyone to enter without my permission. Both guards nodded. Allie stood in the suite, watching Alexander as he turned around. He glanced at her for a moment. Feeling tired and in need of self-medication, he walked over to the decorated table in the corner. He lifted the pitcher up off the table and tilted it to fill his glass, only to find it was empty. Ray, bring more wine. He shouted before throwing the vase to the floor, shattering it to pieces. Allie jumped and stepped back, still soaking wet, watching him. She looked around the room at the glazed stone floor and polished black stone columns. Alexander walked over to the foot of the bed and grabbed a robe that was draped across the decorative bench. He tossed the garment over to her. Dry yourself. Put something warm on before you freeze. He turned his back to her, walked over to the stone balcony, and stood at the railing. Allie looked at the light pink silk robe in her hands. She meandered behind a nearby column to change, watching Alexander as he stood on the balcony and gazed out over the city with his back to her. Removing the soaking wet robe, Allie quickly realized she still wore her modern-style clothes underneath. She slipped her wet clothes off using the damp robe for cover, trying her best not to draw attention. At once, a servant girl, Ree, walked in carrying a pitcher of wine. Allie stood with her arms up, shirt halfway off, hoping the servant wouldn't notice. The servant glanced at her and seemed to take no notice of Allie's modern clothing now lying on the floor. She focused her attention solely on filling a cup of wine and bringing it over to Alexander. Allie hurried to remove the rest of her wet clothes and put the pink robe on while the servant girl was distracted. She wrapped her wet clothes up in the wet robe to hide them and placed them on the bench at the foot of the bed. Ree left the two of them in the room alone as Alexander dismissed her with a wave of his hand. Staring out across the rooftops of the slumbering city, Alexander drank his wine in the warm torchlight. Allie quietly walked over to the balcony. The city sleeps as its king waits to discover an unforgivable truth. Mumbled Alexander. Your actions have brought much unsteadiness to my heart. Allie stood in the doorway of the balcony. I'm sorry, Alexander. No. He turned around to silence her. I should be the one expressing my apologies. Without your actions, I would have remained ignorant of the truth. Alexander stared at the city, placing his cup on the railing. Since we turned back, I have feared my men would betray me. They longed to be home with their families and to hold their wives. A man's love for his family and home will always be stronger than any army a king can command. I understand that better than anyone. Allie replied as she lowered her head. Tell me, why do you venture across unknown lands with your brother in search of lost souls whom you do not even know? Such a task seems reckless and idiotic, yet you maintain your determination all the same. Eh, uh, well, this, uh, Cyprus is the one with the determination, said Allie as she walked out onto the balcony and stood next to him. I came trying to prove something to myself. And what would that be? That I wasn't afraid. I have let my life be controlled by my own fears and anxieties for so long. I knew the only way I could ever overcome them was by accompanying him. Well, that and I was pressured into it by a very caring man. I envy your bravery. Replied Alexander. He drank the rest of his wine. I once shared the same bravery. However, uh, I choose to let it manifest into pride. Pride so solid, so strong, not even the finest artisan could shape it. 
Now I have let my pride push me away from those I once called brothers. You still have your legacy. My legacy will be burned at my side. As my generals now scheme and plan my death, I know they also plan to destroy my legacy. My name may be stripped from history and buried by the sands of time, with only myself to blame for it. Ali shook her head at Alexander's pessimism, unable to believe the doubt in his voice. Alexander, <laughs> your accomplishments will go down in history and be written about for thousands of years to come. You conquered nations, not just with your acts of war, but through your generosity and search for peace. Leaders from all across the world will be inspired by your victories and leadership. While great heroes in Greece will fade into myth, your name will become historical. You created one of the greatest cities and libraries in the world. A world of knowledge so significant that its destruction will bring about hundreds of years of darkness. Your life is one of the most important throughout history. Reflecting on his accomplishments, Alexander bowed his head. He had crossed vast plains and seas, witnessed sights that most men had heard in stories, built cities that could never be matched in beauty, and had fallen in love with people his heart now ached to see again. Don't ever doubt yourself, Alexander. You're an amazing leader, and you've done so much in so little time. Said Allie, her voice brimming with confidence. You speak as though these things have already happened. You must either be an oracle or a very clever liar to say such things. He replied, turning his head away from her to wipe his eyes on his shoulder. I'm an oracle then, because I'm not lying. Good. My faith has been well placed in you and your brother in that case, Artemis. He replied, putting a hand on her shoulder. Why did you save me? Not that I'm ungrateful. I saw truth within you. With the possibility of my own men now wishing for my death, and the most innocent and unlikely of strangers in my travels seemed trustworthy. I felt as though there was something special about you two. That perhaps you had been sent by the gods to aid me. I hope your instinct has been right so far, replied Allie, smiling. Indeed, it has been. Allie pulled her hair back into a ponytail and felt her wrist for a hair tie. Her wrist was bare. Her only tie had fallen off during her swim in the garden moat. Alexander glanced over at her. He removed the silver metal band from his wrist and placed it in Allie's hand. A gift for your kind words and trust. May the links remind you that bravery must never be chained by our fears, as we both have allowed to happen in the past. Allie looked at the bracelet, admiring the polished links. Thank you. She smiled with gratitude. She pulled her hair back and wrapped the band around her ponytail. Alexander! Shouted Ptolemy from outside the doorway after the soldiers attempted to stop him from entering. Alexander and Allie's attention turned around. Alexander lifted his hand to call off the soldiers, allowing Ptolemy to enter freely. I bring word. Alexander raised a finger to his lips, then waved Ptolemy over out of earshot from prying ears at the doorway. Did you find him? Yes. Is he all right? Yes, my lord. He is safe. You found Cyprus? Yes, replied Ptolemy, nodding out of breath. Finally, Allie's worries were lifted. She sighed, knowing she was no longer alone and that her guide was still alive. Good. What word do you bring? They have evidence of Seleucus's treachery. A letter proving treason. <coughs> Where is it, then? Asked Alexander. Ptolemy took a deep breath, preparing to tell his story. Oliver and Sim stopped outside the only shop decorated with a wooden overhang and draping vines that extended to a small garden on the side. Ducking down below the window, Sim scanned the streets to see only a single couple talking loudly outside their home. The sign above the shop was foreign to him, but he guessed, based upon the garden at the rear and collection of bottles inside, this must be the place. What's your plan? Asked Sim as he stood next to Oliver in the moonlight. 
I thought you had a plan, said Oliver, looking back at him. You said steal a letter, so I just offered to help. Yeah, you were the one who said you were a master thief. Not true. I said I was just a pickpocket, not a master thief. So what do you suggest we do then? I don't know. I just pocket things from stores and off of people most of the time. I'm not a cat burglar. Yeah, <sighs> fine. I'll distract the shop owner down below. You climb up the scaffolding with the vines to the second story and see if you can find the letter anywhere. Once you have it, climb back down and wave to me out front of the shop. Understood? What kind of letter am I looking for? I don't know. Use your eyes. Anything that mentions Alexander. Who? Asked Oliver. Just go, replied Sim, rolling his eyes. Oliver turned around and hurried while crouched low to the ground, to the scaffolding in the garden. Sim waited in the streets until Oliver was in position. He lifted the cover off his communicator and looked down at the time. He had three hours and twenty-two minutes left. He heaved a deep sigh. He recovered his communicator and walked up to the shop door. He could see the apothecary through the door window, standing at the counter at the other end of the shop, sorting through his coins. Sim opened the door and strode into the shop, smiling at the dark, bearded man as he entered. The apothecary looked up at him and smiled back. He casually slid the coins into a bag with his palm. I'm sorry, but I am closed, said the apothecary, tightening the bag and placing it under the counter. Sim hobbled over to the desk, exaggerating his pain. Yeah, deepest apologies, sir, but I'm looking for something to help soothe my leg. Yeah. The apothecary looked at Sim's leg for a moment, noticing the faded wet blood stain on his robe. Ah, might I ask what ails you, sir? Yeah, well, I was attacked the other day. Nothing broken, luckily. Just needed something to ease the pain. Simple fix. Very easy, replied the apothecary. He turned around and sorted through some of the bottles on the shelf behind him. Sim could see the dark burn scar on his neck reassuring him that this was the right man. Climbing up the tangled vines of the wooden scaffolding, Oliver reached the top, hoping the wood beams would support his weight. With a small window ahead of him, closed off by a small wooden shutter, Oliver crept over to the window and yanked on the shutter to pry it open. Sim stood at the counter as the apothecary searched through the bottles for one in particular. The sudden sound of Oliver ripping the shutter open could be heard upstairs. The apothecary stopped and listened for a moment. Oliver entered the upstairs room with a deep thud, capturing both Sim and the apothecary's attention. The man looked up at the ceiling. What do you have in mind? Asked Sim. Sim glanced up at the ceiling, then back at the man trying to lure his attention. The man turned around and stared at him. Uh, yes, I have just the thing here. He turned his attention back to his shelf and continued to search through the bottles. Sim sighed softly and continued to wait, hoping Oliver would be quieter. Oliver searched around the small but tidy room and noticed the table sitting at the far end. A single oil lamp sat perched on the table, which illuminated the room. He hurried over to the table and began sorting through the rough pieces of parchment paper scattered across its surface in an attempt to find the one he was looking for. Sim stood in the shop below, anxiously listening for Oliver's movements upstairs. Ah, this is the one. Here, sir, swallow this mixture, and I can guarantee you this leg will never hurt again. Not even for an itch. Wonderful, replied Sim, a little too enthusiastically. The man smiled and handed Sim the mixture in a glass bottle. Sim looked at the mixture through the bottle for a moment, attempting to buy Oliver as much time as possible. What's in it? Unfortunately, it's a personal secret. However, I can assure you, the mixture will ease even the most brutal of pains. Upstairs, Oliver flipped through the many pages on the desk, noticing that they were all written in a language he couldn't read. Shifting his stance, he leaned from one side of the table to the other, frantically trying to find the letter. The stool resting at his feet fell over onto its side, bouncing off the solid floor. Sim and the apothecary both looked up at the stairs. Good, good. How how much do I owe you? Asked Sim, trying to draw the apothecary's attention again. Uh, would you excuse me for just one moment? 
asked the apothecary, still fixated on the sound. He grabbed the bottle from Sim's hand and placed it back on the shelf before making his way over to the stairs. Sim stood, desperately trying to come up with another reason for the man to stay downstairs. Oliver heard the sudden sound of the man's steps on the stairs near him. He grabbed all the papers off the table before attempting to hide beneath it. He sat quietly with his knees tight to his chest, holding the papers, trying his best not to crunch them in his panicked clutches. Sim watched the man march up the stairs, knowing his plan was foiled if he didn't act quickly. Looking at the oil lamp at the back of the shop, he hatched an idea. As the apothecary reached the top stair, Sim hurried around the counter. Oliver sat under the table quietly. He watched the man's feet approach the table and pace around the room as he searched for the source of the noise. Looking around the room for a minute, the man noticed the window shutter was broken and the stool now lying on the floor. As the man walked over to the stool, Oliver held his breath. He could feel the space under the table growing hotter. The man reached down and picked the stool up as Oliver watched him from the dark shadows. The apothecary set the stool down upright on the floor. He stood for a second, wondering what could have caused the stool to fall, before noticing Oliver's shadow cowering under the table. The apothecary bent down to look closer. Oliver closed his eyes, waiting to be discovered. As he bent down, the apothecary suddenly noticed a warm orange and yellow glow flickering on the wall over the desk. The thick smell of burning plants and wood began to fill the room from the window. He turned around. Out through the window, he saw a vast column of flames growing in his garden below. No, 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 shouted the apothecary as he stood upright and bolted back down the stairs. Hiding around the corner of the shop, Sim watched and waited. The apothecary dashed out the front door and around the side of the building to find his garden was now ablaze. Desperate to put out the flames, he began shouting for help. No, 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 somebody please help! Sim noticed movement inside the shop window. Oliver ran down the stairs and out the front door on the lookout for the apothecary. Sim hurried over to meet Oliver at the doorway. Way to be quiet. What did you do? Asked Oliver, looking at the flames. I uh, improved his garden a bit. You lit it on fire? I'd say I improved it. Did you find the letter? Sim said as he grabbed Oliver's shoulders. I, I don't know. I couldn't read any of these, so I just took all of them. Oliver handed Sim the pieces of parchment. Ah, great. Well, good job anyway. Replied Sim, trying to give Oliver an ill-deserved compliment. Now come on. We need to get to the palace bridge and fast. Ptolemy stood on the bridge at the north end of the palace, eagerly waiting for Sim and his new friend. He paced anxiously, alone, having told the guards to leave him in solitude to think. Having finished his hundredth and twenty-second lap across the bridge, Ptolemy heard a whisper from the bushes close by. He turned to see Sim and Oliver creep out from under the bushes and hurry over to him. You find the letter? Asked Ptolemy as they approached the bridge. Uh, we don't know. Hopefully one of these. Replied Sim, handing Ptolemy the pieces of parchment. How do you not know? Replied Ptolemy as he yanked the papers from Sim's hand and moved into the torchlight to see them better. As he finished reading each page, Ptolemy threw it into the water below, growing more and more discouraged with each one. No, 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 these are all just ledgers. He threw the last one into the water. Did you bring more? Oliver shook his head, guessing he knew what Ptolemy had asked him. Sim reached into his damp robe, pulled out another folded slip of paper from his pocket, and handed it to Ptolemy. Is that it? It was the only paper I found behind the counter. Ptolemy unfolded the paper and began reading the words to himself. His expression changed to shock. Sim and Oliver stood and waited for an answer. Is that it? Asked Sim again, impatience creeping into his tone. Yes, unfortunately, said Ptolemy, reading the final words. All right, so let's go arrest Seleucus and get Artemis back. It's not that simple. This letter says that Sir Lucas was ordered by the Council to kill Alexander, with support from the other generals. So? Asked Sim, confused. This letter confirms our worst fear, replied Ptolemy. 
He sat down on the railing of the bridge. Look, Ptolemy, I'm sorry this letter is bad news for you, but I really need Artemis back. Things are going to get a lot worse if we don't leave here. Yes, I'm sorry. You kept your end of the deal. Now we shall keep ours. He turned around and waved to the upper balcony behind him. Sam and Oliver looked up and saw a man wave back before walking inside and out of sight. This news is going to be difficult for Alexander, said Ptolemy, looking down at the letter. Alexander strode from the small side entrance accompanied by his servant Re and a woman wearing a cloth over her face. They made their way over to meet Ptolemy, Sim, and Oliver on the bridge. Did they acquire it? asked Alexander. Ptolemy handed him the letter in silence. Allie unwrapped the cloth from her face and revealed herself to Sim. She ran over to his side of the bridge and stood in front of him, holding her wet robe and clothes, smiling. Nice escape plan, said Allie sarcastically. Hey, as I stated before, I may not know history, but I know how to stay alive. Sim smirked. Alexander read the letter. The reality of betrayal settled in. I'm sorry, my lord. No, I'm glad I now know. The discovery may be hard to take in. The answers I've been longing for help drive away the madness. Alexander crumpled the letter up and placed it in the torch at the end of the bridge. Wait, wait, wait. Don't you need that? If the rest of the army knew of this betrayal, I would lose what little I have left. Perhaps by holding on to what honor I still have. I may still live a glorious life, feeling like I am still king. You are still king, Alexander, murmured Ptolemy. Maybe to you, my loyal friend, but no longer to Macedonia, replied Alexander, watching the letter burn to ashes. Now, let us aid my saviors in their escape. With the moon falling on the horizon and a new wave of darkness covering the night, Ali, Sim, Oliver, Alexander, and Ptolemy rode on horseback across the desert. Sim watched the minutes tick away on his communicator. They rode hard through the sand and wind, hoping they'd make it in time. With the moon hiding behind the hills, the only visible light was the bright, shimmering starlight from the gateway ahead of them, still resting at the base of the palm tree. Sim sighed with relief. They had 30 minutes left. Alexander and Ptolemy both sat on their horses, staring in wonder at the gateway, captured by its beauty an unimaginable presence. In all my life, I have never seen a star so bright, so close, said Alexander. What is it? asked Ptolemy. Sorry, but I couldn't tell you even if I tried, replied Sim, hopping off his horse. Oliver still sat perched on the horse's back, hesitant to get closer to the light. Beautiful, isn't it? Indescribably said Alexander as he dismounted. Sim looked back at Oliver and offered him a hand down. Oliver looked at his hand, unsure of what to make of his new friend. It's all right. Come on, said Sim in a calming voice. Oliver took Sim by the hand and stepped down from the horse, trying his best to keep his distance from the aura. We had our suspicions about you two, great wanderers of both lands and times said Ptolemy, smiling at the light. Sim and Allie both looked at them, confused, pretending they didn't know what he was talking about. A wise man once taught us that there are always things in this world we don't understand. But we must always do our best to understand them anyway. A woman who speaks of the future as though she has seen it for herself, and a man speaking languages that even we, having traveled across the world, have never heard before, sparked our curiosity. That and your sandals don't appear made by even the most skilled craftsmen in all Greece. Alexander pointed down at Sim's feet. Sim looked down and noticed his brown boots sticking out from under his robe for everyone to see. He raised his head up and looked sheepishly at them. Ali snickered and shook her head. Alexander and Ptolemy <laughs> laughed. Well, knowing that you two come with far greater knowledge of the beyond brings warmth to my heart. Your assurances that my legacy will not be forgotten helps make my final days worth living. 
You're a great king, Alexander. I honestly wish more leaders shared your sense of chivalry and honesty. Said Ali with a smile. Thank you, Artemis. If that is your real name. My name's Ali, actually. Well, thank you, Ali. Replied Alexander, embracing her. Ptolemy smiled at Sim. He offered his hand. Sim took it and smiled back, gripping Ptolemy's hand firmly with his own. Now you've earned my trust. <laughs> Sam. Sam, you're a brave man. I see now you're not as foolish as I once thought. I'm sure your mentor is proud of you. Sim half-heartedly smiled at him and released his hand. Ptolemy turned and shook Oliver's hand as well. Oliver stood, still confused by the situation and desperately wanting some form of comfort in the conversation. I am eternally indebted to both of you. May we drink together in the afterlife. I just wish we could have done more to help. Any more, and I might have lost my kingdom entirely because of my own thirst for glory. I guess you're welcome in that case. Now let's get out of here before we're all history, said Sim as he grabbed the backpack from the base of the palm tree. He pulled out the two pairs of welding goggles and handed a pair to Allie. Might want to cover your eyes, said Allie to Oliver. Sim pulled the cover off his communicator and pressed the return button. They pulled the goggles on over their eyes. Sim put out his hand for Oliver. Oliver hesitated, then took it. Just follow me. Where are we going? Asked Oliver. Somewhere far from here. Trust me. I'll get you home to your sister like I promised. Replied Sim. The light began to grow. The white light gradually illuminated the desert as Alexander and Ptolemy lifted their hands to shield their eyes. Oliver took a deep breath and covered his eyes. With the gateway open, Sim walked into the light, Oliver and Allie close behind him. The trio disappeared into the gateway, leaving Alexander and Ptolemy each with a hand over their eyes until the aura faded. They stood in the fading moonlight of the desert, with the brilliance of the Milky Way glowing across the sky above them. Messengers from the gods, said Alexander. He smiled and mounted his horse. Ptolemy gathered the other two horses and hopped up onto his saddle as he held the reins. Alexander stared at the single palm tree now left in the sea of hills and sand. With this news, I intend to discuss my final wishes, Ptolemy, said Alexander. Ptolemy hopped up onto his horse. Please, not now, my lord. The day's events have drained me and left me confounded. It is almost too much for a man to take in. Very well. Tomorrow. For now we rest. My skin grows cold and I am weary from the frigid desert sands. Cold? How could you feel cold on such a warm night? As the ark spun and hummed back to life, Otto hurried down the stairs to the basement in time to witness Sim and Allie arrive with their new traveler all dressed in their worn-out robes. Sheesh, I was beginning to worry there, kid. You weren't replying to my calls, said Otto, eyeing the bags under their eyes as the room fell quiet. Sim turned to Allie. Can you take Oliver upstairs and show him the room next to yours? Sure, she replied. She turned to Oliver. Follow me. So how did it go? Asked Otto enthusiastically as Oliver followed Allie upstairs. Sim walked over to the locker and pulled the wet robe over his head. Otto bounced over to him and grinned. So? Sim shot him a side glare. He hung the robe up to dry in his locker before shutting the door and looking at Otto, a slight smirk on his face. I, I told, told you so. so. They both said in unison. They both stared at one another, confused by the other's response, ready to settle yet another dispute. Hello, this is Harry Petri, the voice of Alexander the Great from Sem Adventures Across Time. If you've enjoyed your adventure across time so far, be sure to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash T.S. Whelan. With your support, you'll gain early access to the next chapter of the book, and even a copy of the book itself. With your contribution, more thrilling and inspiring audiobooks can be made every day through the hard work, time, and dedication of voice actors and artists all across the world. From all of us here in the World Between Worlds, 
We'd like to thank you for joining us on our adventures.